So we are continuing with functions and unfortunately the first part did not get recorded. So did everybody get to try this part? Ten. All right. So now we can actually just change this up a little. And I can actually say, well, z is plus times of 4, 5. Okay. And basically, now z is this entire collection of outputs. Okay. And the way I get to them is z of 1 and z of 2. So basically, I have print z of or 0, 0, rather, and 0, 1. So I had two outputs. I can store them in this one variable called z. And this variable is actually a collection. It's called a tuple. It's collection. It's not an array, precisely. It behaves as an array. <coughs> Because in this case, I actually have two numbers. But it could have been like a number and a string, or a number and an entire another array. Whatever it is that my function is actually outputted, outputting, it's just going to create a collection where first part of that collection, z of 0, is that first output. z of 1 is the second output, whatever kind of object that might be. Okay. So it's really flexible in that sense. You can just say z. And in this case, I can actually say, hey, print z of 0 plus z of 1. And actually, I can do addition because those two numbers are actually the same type of object. And you can say type of z, and it's going to tell you it's a tuple. So tuple is just a collection of different objects, and I refer to them as if I had an array. Z of 0 is the first object, Z of 1 is the second, and I can do some math with it if it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, I'm going to get an error. So just to quickly recap before we move on. So I could have two outputs. Okay. I output sort of this collection tuple of whatever it is that I want to take from my function out. But that's the only thing that then I know then once I'm out of the function. Okay. So if I want to do something with whatever function outputs, I have to record it. I have to put it in some tuple or however many variables. And then I can do something with that. And again, I can just provide one output, in which case I'm going to get the entire collection out, however many outputs. And z of 0 is the first one, z of 1 is the second one, z of 2 would be third one if there was three of them, and so forth. And in this particular case, if I printed the type of z, it's this tuple, it's this collection. But individual member, like for instance, z of 1 is just an integer because that's what I output from the function. So that information travels well. <coughs> and then I can do something with the output. In this case, I wanted to sum them up. OK? Now, again, unless you want that output, like whatever happens in function, it does stay in function. The function cleans up and deletes all of the intermediate values that you might have in there. So if you remember that function plus times, it had s is equal to a plus b, p is equal to a times b. It returns values of s and p, and then it forgets that s and p existed as variables. It just cleans up the memory. That's right, OK? So if I wanted to print s and print p, I would get an error because I'm doing that outside of the function. And out, outside of the function, I don't know what is s. I don't know what is p. 
When function is called, those things are temporarily created and then they're deleted before, they're deleted right after I send them out. And I send out the values of it and I don't know what S, P, A, and B are outside of the function. So it's a, this block that does something and cleans up. Okay? Alright. Fun thing, really fun thing, is that I could have any number of inputs. Okay? And I give I give that a note to Python that that's gonna happen by star arcs. This function is going to execute based on what I typed in. Here's how it works. Let's say that I want to provide a, a create a function that depending on however many numbers I give it, it's going to sum those up. Okay? So I give it name plus var. I'm going to go and I'm going to basically, all of my inputs will be separated by commas. And Python will go in and take those inputs and everything separated by commas and separate them in the separate arguments. It's going to create an array of arguments. It's going to call them ARG as in arguments, arg s of 0, arg s of 1, arg s of 2, and so forth. Okay. However I many provide. So then to actually sum them up, I need a for loop inside. And I'm going to say, hey, for my index i in this range of how many, this is length of this argument array, it's actually tuple. For each of them, first I'm going to test that it works, so print this element, and then add it to the sum, and sum I initialize with zero. So I initialize the sum, then I inspect all of the input arguments, okay, from zero to however many there are, and I'm going to print one by one and add it to the sum, and at the end I'm going to return that sum. Is this conceptually clear? Is it conceptually clear? Let's type it in and I'm going to explain it once again and then we're going to play and see what it does. It's, that's a really powerful way to have a function that kind of does whatever we tell it to do and it kind of behaves slightly differently or it has the same behavior but it's not designed to have precisely two arguments. It could have one, two, three, four, five, however many I type in. So I'm going to call this plus var. And again, that star arguments is the way I'm telling that there's variable number of arguments. So the way I go through those arguments is I do a for loop. So I say for i in my range. In range, I have to have starting and ending points. Right? And those, don't forget those famous columns everywhere. Let's just print them for now. So this is my ith you know, argument, argument i in my list. And right now I'm just going to return nothing. Okay. So this function right now doesn't do anything other than print back to me whatever it is that I gave it. Okay. And I have a syntax error. It's outside function, of course. It should be indented. So entire function block has to be lined for spaces in. Otherwise, I don't know that that code block is belonging to the function. So now it's defined correctly. Very inventive as usual. Plus one, two, three, four. 
So I separated my arguments by comma. And if this function is doing what I expect it to do, it should print those back to me. <coughs> Boom. Okay. Actually, right now, this function couldn't care less what it is that I provide it with. I could have said, hey, Masha is my last argument. So I have three numbers and then a string. Printed those back to me. Big deal. I shouldn't do any arithmetic with it, but other than that. Okay. So let's now go back to summing these up. Okay. So just like any time we have a sum, sums, especially of finite things, it's, they're best done with for loops. And I always have to initialize sum with a zero. So this is simply initializing my sum. And every time I have an argument, I'm just going to say, OK, increment this with this new argument. And then return that sum at the end. If I want it outside of the function, I should return it. That's it. Now my output is 6. Indeed, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. Works so far. Can I keep going? 40 and 100? The result should be 146. Voila. Voila is only French, I know. Maybe I know three more words. I have 146. What would happen if I add Masha to it? Can I sum up a string and it uh, has an issue? It has an issue with addition between my string and my number. So it doesn't know what I want it to do. I design what I want to do. If that something doesn't make sense, then I'm going to get an error. And sometimes it might work until it doesn't, right? <laughs> so until you test it with something that it doesn't work. So you have to be careful. And it's typically good to have actually a comment here, by the way, the function that adds any number of numerical right, inputs or scalar. So that way, I'm not going to provide it with a string masha, or I shouldn't if I read this morning. So that gives some comment to your work so that you know what this function does. So it's not going to work by adding Masha, but it keeps working with whatever to do. Technically, if I'm careful, since this is a plus okay, function, and plus I know that I can work with vectors, okay, I could technically give it two NumPy arrays of the same dimension, and it should be able to add them up just fine, because that's what plus does, OK? So that should work. So this is a pretty powerful way to start combining things. And again, things are as smart as I program them. So sometimes if I provide it with strings, it's not going to work. But this is a pretty powerful way. Okay. So we're going to now, next, any questions about this? So you can now, any problem that I ask you to do, you could write as a script in Python, or you could write as a function that can be reused later. The main difference between a script and a function is when I write a script, then all of the variables that I defined in the process of computing something, they stay in memory. 
whereas function cleans that up and returns only what I wanted it to, to return. That's the main difference. And also, I could reuse script as well, but you will have in your homework, is it number three, if I recall correctly? There's an algorithm for calculating square root. And that algorithm is asking you to repeat the same thing basically for 0, for 4, and minus 9, or something like that. So three values. Okay? So when you hash out, you will start writing a script, and then you will try those three values, and then you're fi going to fix up your code so that it works for all three values. And once you've done that, then you package that into a function, and then you just execute that function three times for three different inputs. Right? So that is the process of writing code. When I'm given a problem, first I'm just going to open a file and start writing and solving and testing and seeing how it prints out and all that stuff. Right? <clears throat> but then after I'm done, I'm going to create a function that I can just call. And sort of call in a clean way. Con function will clean up any intermediate variables it defined and they're not going to bog down my memory. So before we actually go to a little larger example, let's just also learn one more thing. How do I actually create a module? So I'm going to take this function, any of them, plus var, for instance. I'm going to copy that function into a new file. And I'm going to save that as a plain Python file. No notebooks, just a Python file. And I can do that from Jupyter. And then I'm going to import that file in a new file that I'm using. Okay. So this is basically creating a new module. So I'm going to copy that function, good old cut copy, without this execution here, just the function, control C. I'm going to do a new one, file new. And I'm going to save that. Actually, I think you'll have to do save and download as Python. Um, and actually, before downloading, I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name, my function. My functions. There could be more that I want to add to it. It's going to rename. And now I'm going to download as Python. Okay. So download. And then move it to your directory. We know by now how to operate within the directories of your respective computers, right? Right? Okay. So this is now in my downloads. So I'm going to go into my okay, show. I'm going to go into my finder. I'm going to open wherever my files are and I'm going to move those my functions into it, okay? So you have to navigate to wherever that might be and all you only you know where. Let's see whether I know. So I'm in my scripts. I need to be in my downloads. So dump from downloads into there. By saving that function into a Python script, there's a function instead with define and everything, and there could be multiple, we just had one. You have defined a module, and this module is called myfunctions.py. Now you can import it in any other, either Jupyter Notebook or a Python script that you'd like. Let's do that. So if I... Hmm? What is that? So save as you download it. 
So oh, it's in the same file. So how do you find it? Where's your Python? So can you help out a little? Download it Python. BY? Yes. Python BY. Save. Oh, save. Yes. You open it. Okay. So save it now, it's in downloads. And from downloads, that's a folder on your computer. Move it to wherever you have your files. By, by now, I hope you organize the folder with all the files you're using in bus. <coughs> okay? So now, I'm going to go to my... I'm going to close this. And I'm going to open a new one. New notebook, okay? This notebook doesn't know anything about that function plus var, okay? But I can import it. I can say import my functions as mf, whatever name you want to do. Now we know about them. Let's actually just execute this. If there's no error, that means that it found it wherever it was supposed to find, find it. And now mf dot plus var, uh, 1, 2, 1, and 7. What is 1 plus 2 plus 7? It knows about it. If I replace my functions with NumPy and MF as MP, does this ring a bell? So NumPy is .py file somewhere on your computer. <coughs> Since you installed it, Python actually knows where to find it, even though it's not in your directory here. Okay? But it knows how to find it. And there's something called path. And you can open or know about things that are only on your path on every operating system. So when you install a software, there is files or directories that are added to your path, and then you can open whatever it is that you installed. That's what installation actually means. Installation means taking a bunch of code, placing it into a location, and then making that location known to your entire operating system. <coughs> or at least those icons that do something with it. <laughs> so that like a little icon that shows up as your Firefox is linked to whatever executables are for Firefox, and your system knows all of the other details that it needs to know to open successfully. That's what installing means. So you basically installed your module, right? You're learning a little bit of computer science, just a little, as much as we need here. Did everybody do this successfully? How I call it doesn't matter. If you didn't call Lingyu, he's bored up there. We don't want Lingyu bored. That's not the other thing. So my function is .py file somewhere where I know, and for now, that's in this directory that I have everything in. I'm importing it as mf, and then I'm referring to the function that I defined as plus var, and I can then execute it. So this is what we've been doing all along with different modules. And you know everything you need to know to actually create, create modules on your own. Questions? <coughs> okay, so I have a little project in mind that is going to be defining function, but that's basically for entire, because right now we can, I can just read it to you what the problem is and then the, <laughs> the bell will ring. So we're going to stop here, and the next time uh, we're actually going to do simulation of number pi. Monte Carlo. All right.